there's lots of interesting features that come out of our work on wealth. Um, one clear-cut uh, result is just how much of wealth is concentrated in uh, the rich part of the world. Uh, we're talking now about North America, Western Europe, and uh, rich um, Asia-Pacific countries, uh, Japan, Korea, Hong Kong, that type of thing. Um, really, a very, very high proportion of global wealth is in those, in those countries. There's a lot of other countries which are catching up in the sense that their wealth growth is much faster, and uh, I think that is another feature on the whole. Um, if you take a longer period, then China in particular, India, um, qu quite a few of the uh, uh, emerging Asian markets are doing very well and catching up, but it's still a long way to go to, to catch up the, the, these other uh, rich countries. Um, in terms of wealth inequality, the, certainly what is coming out this year in our work is just how much higher the wealth inequality is in the emerging world, the developing world, the emerging markets, uh, whatever you want to call that. On the whole, the uh, most of the Western Europe is roughly the same in wealth inequality level as it was back in 1980. Um, it's what we would call medium or middle um, wealth inequality. A couple of the countries are above that. Um, some of the uh, Scandinavian countries are quite interestingly have a little bit higher than uh, average wealth inequality. Um, and then at the top end, there's two countries which stand out in, in the developed world, and that is the US and Switzerland. They're the ones which have um, wealth inequality levels now, which are really quite reminiscent of what they were 100 years ago. So in those countries, they're, they're back to 100 years ago. If you look at the developing world, then, in fact, the majority of countries are up there in that top, uh, comparable with the levels that one observed in the US 100 years ago. Um, when one asks, you know, is that uh, unusual or is there, is there some worry about that, I think you have to look at the reasons for it. And the reasons are not well documented. This is not a research area where people have done a lot of, a lot of work. Um, but I think one, one reason is that in a developing country, you get some people who are really, if you like, part of the globalized world. They're connected uh, with uh, the, the other parts of the world. And they do fairly well because their, their sort of uh, returns, uh, their skills are being rewarded in a global economy, whereas uh, there's a lot of other people who are really just um, in, in their... Just still involved in their rather crude, backward um, agricultural area in particular, and their really wealth levels are very low. So you get this in inequality because of this difference between the, uh, the, the relation, exactly where people are in the country and how they relate to the global economy. The other factor I think is quite important is countries which are growing fast in terms of wealth, I think they are... Typically, wealth inequality is increasing in those countries. In fact, that's one of the uh, features that we've uh, discovered this year. And I think there it's because uh, if we take China, where our evidence suggests that wealth inequality has been growing very fast, I think if you look and say it's growing fast because the people who are doing very well, they are often small businesses, uh, small family groups, They've been doing very well. They're making, uh, being rewarded in, in very reasonable ways for their, for their efforts and their success. But they don't, they haven't had time, if you like, to spread the wealth. Whereas in a, in a developed country, if people uh, have a successful business, it's often part owned by various other people. They, the, the shares get spread. Of course, over time, it gets spread because it's uh, inherited or passed on to various sorts of people. So the the initial success, the initial rewards get spread out over time. And as uh, if a country is, is the wealth is growing very fast, then they just haven't had the time for that to happen. 
So if you like, it's the, the new wealth is going to be more unequal than the older wealth. And um, on the whole, uh, new wealth is being produced faster in countries where wealth is growing. So I think that's, that's one of the other factors. Um, so those, you know, the, when you look, and look at it, you have to ask yourself, is this something that's uh, persisting or is it, if you like, a transitory phase that's going to resolve itself over time? And will, will the emerging markets and developing countries move towards the wealth distribution seen now in developing countries? And I would say, on the whole, I think there's good reason to expect that to happen over time. If we look over time, then inequality within countries uh, is certainly looks like it's been increasing in the last few years. Um, it, it has moved down at various time uh, stages uh, within the recent past as well. So it's not it's not a clear cut trend. So, but it is quite high, and it could well be increasing uh, for the reasons. Uh, because of wealth is growing and countries are developing. The, um, when you look at the global picture, it becomes more complicated because you have two factors. We, will, we talk about within-country inequality and between-country inequality. Uh, the within-country just depends on inequality within countries. Between-country depends on the levels. And uh, so we then have to take into account whether the levels between countries are converging or diverging on the whole, uh, the developing world wealth has been growing faster. So that's one factor which is going to tend to reduce between country inequality uh, on the global scale. So we've got these two counteracting factors, if you like. The, the likelihood is that within countries, wealth inequality is increasing, partly because of uh, globalization and, and, and that sort of factor. But between countries, the same globalizing effects are, are tending to reduce differences between countries. So these two things are offsetting. Um, and often, there's really not very much. On, on the whole, they net out, and so there's not very much change on the global scale. It's not, it's not very evident. And very often, it can be, if there is any observed trend globally, it's often just because of one country, and China is the one that's the dominant influence there because it's been really moving up through the, uh, through the uh, spectrum of the world uh, wealth uh, distribution. We have a very interesting picture, which we developed for the first wider study, and which we've repeated every year, which shows the regional um, distribution of... Uh, we, we take each decile in the world and, and give a picture to show which region the people are in, and in this picture, you see China as a big glob, a big blob in the middle of the, the world. And you see this blob over time moving towards the right as the, as the Chinese uh, progressively get richer and move up the wealth distribution globally. Um, that clearly is a sort of equalizing factor. But as I say, the, uh, there are other factors as well. So the, the, net, the net result um, uh, isn't very, very... Uh, fast. And it's, that's also true um, in, in within country inequality. These trends are, are on the whole are quite small. So you have to take rather long periods, usually 20 or 30 years, before you really notice much of a, a trend over time. Mm -hmm.